Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Barrett, and this video is intended for my patients exclusively. If you've had surgery by another surgeon, please make sure to follow up with that surgeon for particular details about your surgery. And if you're having a medical emergency, please dial 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. Congratulations, you just had a Barrett breast augmentation. Breast augmentation performed by me. You're on your way home, hopefully at this point, or at home watching this video. And I'm very excited for you. You made an awesome decision, and you're gonna go through a little bit of a roller coaster ride until you get your full results. And this video is to walk you through the next steps of what you should expect and things you should be concerned about and what to do and what not to do. First and foremost, you're gonna have a little bit of stretching sensation. And remember, we injected a lot of numbing medicines, you're not gonna have a whole lot of pain in your chest. I might feel a little uncomfortable, but that's gonna get better as the night goes on and it'll be better by tomorrow. You can take Tylenol or CBD for pain. I recommend you don't take the Norcos. The Norcos are bad, they cause nausea, constipation, and they generally make you heal less fast, okay? So I'd, I'd rather you not take the Norcos, even though I would prescribe them, they're there as a backup. When it comes to pain control, the CBD is the best option for this. You take a full dropper full, put it underneath your tongue, let it sit for a few minutes before you swallow it, okay? It's gonna absorb better that way, and take another full dropper full at nighttime when you're about to go to bed. I did not put you in a surgical bra on purpose. If I did, you're wearing one. If you're not wearing one, it's on purpose, okay? Majority of my breast augmentation patients, I do not put you in a surgical bra because I want the blood supply to reach the breasts. A t-shirt or loose-fitting sports bra is the best option for your healing. Now, you gotta remember that little patch behind your ear. Take that off as soon as you get home, but don't rub your fingers on your eye after you do so. If you leave it on, you will get blurry vision. Not a big deal, just take it off when you're ready. You also have a medication called Zofran. If you're nauseous, you put that little medication underneath your tongue, it will help your nausea right away. I want you to take the antibiotics as soon as you get home. The Keflex, you take one pill four times a day, spaced out every six hours. Don't wake up in the middle of the night to take it, all right? Take one before you go to bed, one when you wake up, until the bottle is empty. Now, if it's clindamycin, it's one pill three times a day uh, until the bottle's empty. Remember, all the antibiotics need to be taken their full course. The only time I run into infections is when people don't take the full course of the antibiotics as prescribed, so make sure you do that. Next thing is the colase. Take one pill twice a day until you have a bowel movement. Once you're done with that, you no longer need to take the colase. All these medications can be taken on an empty stomach, so take them right away. So we just put implants in your body. It's not gonna look normal right away, okay? So I tell my patients, don't expect them to look pretty until at least six weeks. So if you look down and they look like aliens, don't worry, it's completely normal. That's gonna drop and settle or drop and fluff over the next six weeks. So have faith in that. Bras can be worn typically around the two week mark, okay? But we're gonna check on your post-op appointment to verify that. In the meantime, again, wear a loose fitting sports bra or a t-shirt. It is even normal to have a little bit of bleeding the first 24 hours. So if you look down, it's bleeding through your shirt or through the steri strips, that's completely normal. Don't worry, it will stop. I wanna talk briefly about steri strips. These are covering your incisions. If they fall off, no big deal. You wanna replace it with a band aid all right now sometimes your body swells with the steri strip on it and if that happens it can form a blister all right and if that blister happens that's okay leave it alone you can put antibiotic ointment on it twice a day and we will remove the steri strip in the office if you get an allergy it develops a severe rash that's red and insanely itchy okay it happens on all the areas where you see this steri strip if that happens remove all your steri strips wash with gentle soap and water and take Benadryl and Claritin to help ease the symptoms. If you have any questions, give the office a call. We close your incisions in multiple layers. The deeper layers are using absorbable sutures to hold your wound together. Sometimes your body extrudes those and spits them out in a, in a slight inflammatory reaction. And if that happens, it's not a big deal. It happens to about 20% of our patients. If you do see that happening, give us a call. We can take it out in the office, or if you feel comfortable, you can pull it gently with a pair of tweezers and trim it with beauty scissors so that it dives down below the skin incision and then cover with antibiotic ointment for a few days or a steri strip. It's normal to have swelling. It's normal to have bruising. It's also normal to have a little bit of anxiety and depression after surgery. That's a normal feeling, okay? By walking three times a day and getting a little bit of sunlight or red light therapy, that will actually boost your mood. So make sure to do that if you're feeling that way. 
One device in particular will help with a lot of your swelling or bruising. It's called red light or light stim therapy. If you have a red light machine, use it right after surgery. You can put it right on the incision or right on your body. Uh, we also sell a handheld version of the light stim in our office. Ask questions about that at your next visit. You can also take a shower 24 hours after your operation. You can get everything wet. I do not want you to take a bath, hot tub, swimming, or uh, getting in a body of water like, a, like the ocean or a jacuzzi. That just basically invites bacteria in. The pressure of the water can cause an infection. Shower is okay. Standing water is not okay. Overall, you want to be very healthy after your operation. Meditation to help lower your stress, okay? Smokers, um, you can't smoke for at least six weeks. For alcohol, uh, people that like to drink wine or drink beer, there's no alcohol consumption for the next two weeks. That's going to decrease your ability to respond to any infections. How should you sleep tonight? Well, you should sleep slightly elevated for the first three nights. That's it, folks. Have a few extra pillows, sleep with your back upright. That's gonna help some of the initial swelling go down. After that, you can start to lay flat, and then after seven days, you can start to lay on your side as you feel comfortable. I wouldn't sleep on your stomach until about six weeks to avoid pressure on your breasts. If you are concerned about stretch marks, you can take a little bit of cocoa butter and vitamin E and place it far away from your incisions on your breasts. Okay, do not put them on your incisions. That's our territory to help you with the first few weeks. We're gonna keep that taped, all right? We're gonna tape it once a week for the first six weeks. We're gonna take out the first layer of stitch at your first post-op visit, and we're gonna take out the second layer at your second post-op visit. Here's your exercise regimen, it's really easy. First two weeks, I just want you walking around. You don't wanna raise your heart rate up, okay? That includes sex, and any activity that's gonna stimulate you to raise your heart rate up, that's gonna cause bleeding, all right? Be very careful, no heavy lifting, anything over eight pounds, all right? That's be careful opening doors, pumping gas in your car, or anything that might require some additional exertion. Use two hands if you have to. Picking up children, I don't recommend it, but if you absolutely have to, wrap your arms around them and lift with your legs, okay? Not with your arms. After the first two weeks, then you can actually start to do some exercise. That's like walking upstairs or doing walking incline workouts or isolated leg workouts. We don't wanna do any upper body. At week four, we can start to do jogging with a supportive bra. At week six, you can actually start to do upper body workouts. Get excited, but use your body as a guide. If something hurts, take a day or two off before you get back at it. So if you have any nipple jewelry, you can put it in right after surgery. And if you want to get additional piercings, please wait at least six weeks from the time of your surgery to get additional piercings, tattoos, or waxes. I have to talk to you about why I don't use surgical bras. Everybody asks why not. There's a lot of leading plastic surgeons that don't use them. And the reason why is we just inserted an implant inside. It's putting pressure on the backside of your breast. Now you want to sandwich it on the outside with a compression bra. But the problem with that is you need blood supply to heal. And when you sandwich the breast, you cut off that circuit it's just like sleeping in your arm. It's actually pretty bad. So that's why I don't use them. It's all about free range boobies, okay? So that they can breathe and they can get the blood supply and heal as they need to. That's why if you have a surgical bra on, we put one on for a reason for pocket issues. But generally speaking, most of my patients, they are not sent home with a surgical bra and that's for that reason. Now it's normal to have some pain, some burning sensation, some little electrical tingles, zingers, everything that you could possibly think of might be happening in your breast. Guess what? Good news is it all goes away right around six weeks, okay, when that starts to settle down and when we start to do massage. That's your nerves waking back up from the trauma of the surgery, all right? We try to minimize that as much as possible, but your nipples might be numb during that time. They might be hypersensitive, but don't worry, that sensation starts to normalize as your healing progresses. Sometimes it may take up to six months for that sensation to either come back or get back down to normal. Don't worry, most situations, it does get back to normal. So I wanna to talk to you about some products that you should be taking after your surgery. It's really important to help you heal and help manage your symptoms. The first one I love is CBD, okay? I recommend this product, Wild Health CBD. You take a full drop or put it in underneath your tongue right when you get home and a full drop or right before you go to bed, you can actually increase as needed. You will sleep like a baby and it'll actually calm your anxiety and calm down your pain to a manageable level, all right? The other thing after breast augmentation is you get muscle spasms or that tightness. The best way to treat that and to help you sleep at night is to take two of these magnesiums, okay? Right when you get home and two right when you go to bed and then take two every night right before you go to bed. It's gonna stop those spasms from happening if you are having pain and it's a much more holistic way to treat the tightness than a narcotic pain medication. Lastly, Arnica. This is a product we recommend. It has Arnica and bromelain in it, so that helps the swelling go down naturally and it helps the bruising. Now, what else do you need to take? Well, there's a product I also recommend. It's called Heal Fast. It's a vitamin supplementation that's designed to help you heal right after the surgery so that your body has the necessary nutrients to heal. You need to take five of these 
twice a day. I know that's a lot, but you need all of these nutrients to heal and to detox your body from the anesthesia. The other product is Masslimes. It has a whole host of enzymes, digestive enzymes. You wanna take four of these pills with every meal to help break down the food and help decrease your body's inflammation so that you heal faster. You can absorb the nutrients and it decreases inflammation in your body. This stuff has been proven to speed up your recovery. It is a must if you're gonna have any surgery by me. One week after your operation, I want you to start taking fish oil. The product I recommend is called Living Fuel Super Essentials Omegas. Okay, the reason why I like this has a one-to-one -one ratio of EPA to DHA. It's a high quality fish oil. Also has vitamin E in it. Studies have shown that taking fish oil and vitamin E decreases your rate of capsular contracture after breast augmentation surgery. It's also good for regular surgery, but in particular for breast augmentation surgery. Okay, you want to start taking this one week after. And for this, it's actually one pill per 25 pounds of body weight. All right. Lastly, scar gel. Pick up the Scanuva scar gel. You want to use this on your incision twice a day. The reason why I like it, it's got silicone and a bunch of other fetal growth factors that help the incision heal. With your implants, you should have gotten one of these little cards. It's got all of your implant information on it right here. And if you didn't get it, call us right away. Take a picture of it with your phone. Save that image forever, all right? That is very important information and it's important for you to register for your warranty, which you should do right now, okay? MentorDirect.com forward slash warranty. Fill out your information. The serial numbers were provided on this card so that you can get coverage of your implants through Mentor Direct in case you have any problems with rupture or capsule contracture, okay? We don't make any money off of it. It is just there for you to cover financial assistance in case you do get capsule contracture and it is worth every penny. A lot of people ask me, when should I contact your office? Well, you're gonna do great for the majority of people. There's gonna be normal swelling. But if you notice a few key things, I want you to give us a call. If you notice that one side is dramatically more swollen than the other side, that could be a sign of a hematoma or severe bleeding, okay, on the inside. If you get a severe body rash, if you get severe pain, especially if it's on one side, that could also be a sign of a hematoma. The normal body temperature varies from 97 to 99 degrees. If you get a temperature of 101 or more, I want you to give us a call, okay? That could be a problem. Significant drainage from your incision. We're not talking a little bit of bleeding, but if you're getting pus draining out from your incision, that's something we should also uh, be made aware of. If you get redness that spreads around from your incision, that spreads out on one side or both sides, that could also be a sign of infection and we need to know about that. If you're unable to keep any food down for more than 24 hours or any fluids and you're feeling very dehydrated, you need to give us a call or you need to go to the emergency room. Just remember that you're gonna do fantastic, have a positive mindset, follow these instructions as we talked about here, you're gonna do perfect, all right? Just know that breasts are gonna to continue to get better at six weeks. They start to look better, but sometimes one drops faster than the other. They're never gonna be perfectly identical. Breasts are sisters, they're not twins, and they are gonna to continue to look better for the next three to six months for the final result, which is right around six months. So that's it, congratulations, you're gonna do great. If you have any additional questions we didn't cover here, give us a call or shoot us an email. You have a great day and I'll see you soon in the office.